Hello everyone and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe and today we still have so much to discuss regarding Taylor and Travis's crazy weekend. I went through all your guys' comments in from yesterday's show and took notes on the things you wanted me to discuss. So we're gonna get into all that stuff, the surprise songs, little jewelry Taylor was wearing, uh, Paul McCartney, the Foo Fighters comments. We're also going to discuss Travis going on a podcast and Taylor saying some very sweet, nice things, revealing his top three Taylor Swift songs. There is so much to talk about. There's so much to get into. This is a such a busy week in the Swifty community. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, what are you waiting for? Because we cover every single thing that happens with Taylor Swift on this show. So if you don't wanna miss a thing regarding Taylor Swift, you need to subscribe to the channel uh, so you won't miss a single video. Okay, let's jump in and go back to Wembley, go back to London and just kind of hit on some of the things that happened that I may have missed from yesterday's show. The first being a lot of you guys commented about Taylor wearing a very special ring on her. I think it was on her index finger, if I remember correctly. Um, and it was a Tiffany ring with two T's, um, which obviously Travis, but it was a big deal because Taylor doesn't wear personal jewelry on stage. She never has. She's she's never worn anything of like sentimental value on I mean, at least that we could see. Maybe she has like a necklace hidden or something. But for the most part, she doesn't wear personalized jewelry on stage. And this ring definitely felt very personalized. And a part of me wonders if Taylor, if Travis gave the ring to Taylor a gift right before the concert or like as like a congratulations for selling at Wembley. I don't actually know. Um, but she wore that little special ring on stage, which is just, again, another symbol. I mean, she has the... TNT bracelet that Travis gave her. She always is wearing like 87 jewelry and stuff. She's she's very good about like, I mean, we we know, you know, I I want to wear his initial on a chain around my neck line. Um, she loves to kind of like give shout outs to the people that she loves. I think that was just another example of her showing her love, which I thought was so sweet. Okay, the surprise songs that she sang. Let's break down these surprise songs. So, Night One Wembley. She first does a mashup of Hits Different and Death by a Thousand Cuts, which is such a good mashup, I have to say. Both of these songs basically being like about, well, Death by a Thousand Cuts is about like going through a devastating break. Hits Different is just about like, I'm in love with this person and like I need to be with them and if I'm not with them, I'm going to die. <laughs> is basically the the message of that song. And so combining them I thought was so so smart and they're very they're different vibes. Hits different is like a beat poppy. Death by a Thousand Cuts is much more like it's not a ballad necessarily, but it's a lot more emotional heavy. But I love both of those songs so much. So I would have really loved to have heard that song live. And then she did The Black Dog. We There was lots of people that thought she would do it in London because The Black Dog is a pub in London. Um, and then she also combined elements of Come Back, Be Here and Maroon. She is loving singing Maroon. I feel like she's performed Maroon more than any other surprise song so far like that. She's incorporating that song into so many surprise song mashups. Another excellent, excellent mashup song choices. This is a very strong contender for one of my favorite surprise song nights. Excellent. Night two, she does a mashup of Thank You Amy and Mean. I mean, Jeff's Kiss. Two songs about dealing with bullies, basically. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Thank You, Amy. Like, it's a fine song. It's good. It's not one of my favorites off of um, TTPD, but I, I, and I, I like that she did it in the mashup format with Mean because it definitely, like, it all, it all makes sense. But Mean, I love Mean. I, I actually really wish Mean was a part of the um, actual set list. And I'm kind of surprised it's not just because, well, one, Speak Now is has one song now, Enchanted, is the only Speak Now song that she sings every single night. So we, we already don't have a lot of Speak Now just in general. But I feel like Mean was such a popular song and people love it. And it's like a, it's a, it's a sing-along type of song. So I kind of wish she incorporated that into the actual set list. But regardless, glad she sang it. And then she changed the lyrics 
to someday I'll be singing this song at Wembley and all you're ever going to be is mean, which is just a great, it's a great song change, lyric change. And then she did Castles Crumbling with Haley Williams. Haley Williams' Paramore was opening for Taylor Swift, has been opening for Taylor Swift um, on tour. And so Haley came out to sing that song, which is a um, one of the vault songs from Speak Now, if I'm remembering all of this correctly, um, which is, again, not like one of my favorite, favorite songs, but it's good and it's fun to have a surprise guest. Um, and then night three, she brings out Gracie Abrams, uh, who has opened for Taylor Swift on, on tour to sing their new song together because Gracie Abrams has an album out, a brand new album out, and she has a song with Taylor Swift on that album called Us. And so Taylor brought Gracie out to sing that song live for the very first time. Very excited. And then she did a mashup of Out of the Woods, Is It Over Now? Excellent. Excellent. Love all three of those songs. I mean, I'm a 1989 is just one of the best albums out start to finish. Sublime. So all three nights, very solid. Though I do have to say, I think night one, the hits different, Death by a Thousand Cuts, mashup, and then the Black Dog, Come Back, Be Here, and Maroon. Can't really get much better than that, but all very solid. L- let me know in the comments your favorite um, of the nights, which of the nights you would have wanted to be at. Um, she didn't sing London Boy, which isn't really that surprising. I-, I think there was a part of me that was like, maybe she'll do London Boy, but I-, I honestly think it's like, that song is so specifically about Joe Allen. And like, I know that, I mean, she sings songs about other relationships, past things all the time, but there's something like weird about her saying like, you know, I'm in love with a London boy when she's not anymore. Like I could see, I could just see it being kind of weird. I I was kind of surprised she didn't do So Long London, but I feel like she's probably saving it for, because she's going to go back to Wembley in August. And so I kind of feel like on the final night of the Wembley shows in August is when she will sing So Long London. So Long London. Um, I also wanted to talk about Paul McCartney dancing to But Daddy I Love Him. If you haven't seen the video, just just go search Paul McCartney, Taylor Swift, and you will see all the videos of him just jamming out. Paul McCartney, icon, legend, and love that he loves, Taylor Swift. Another icon, legend, that is kind of in some hot water with the Swifties is one Mr. Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters, because if you also missed it this weekend, um, they were performing in London, and uh, I believe it was it was in London or like somewhere nearby. Um, And during the show, he made a joke, I say in quotes, that they call their tour the Errors Tour because they actually play live, which was obviously a a dig towards Taylor and the Errors Tour, basically implying that they don't play their music live. Well, Taylor like during her final show in London, made a comment of like, give it up for my band who plays live. Like she she said that. Um, and I don't know. I mean, part of me is like, who cares what Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters have to say about Taylor Swift? Like, it doesn't matter. It, it, it just, it, it doesn't. And like, is it nice? No, but like, whatever, whatever. Taylor Swift is like a massive, huge, huge star. There are artists who love her and there are artists who don't love her. And that's, that's okay. Like it's, it's just, I don't know. It's also silly because Taylor Swift is like an amazing musician. Um, That's like part of what makes her who she is, is her ability to lay songs live and play instruments and stuff. So it's just sort of a weird um, dig, but whatever, Dave. Um, Okay. Then The last thing I wanted to talk about was Travis's most recent podcast appearance on Bussin' with the Bros, which is, or sorry, Bussin' with the Boys, which is a um, Barstool Sports podcast. Um, And he went on to talk about, you know, football and all that stuff. But of course, they asked about Taylor Swift and he actually gave a lot of information kind of and uh, insight into his relationship with Taylor Swift. So he, um, they were were talking to, to him about how, self-aware Taylor is and like I think they they commented about how um when they won the Super Bowl and Taylor's on the field like Taylor and I think I even said this at the time Taylor like knew to like give him space and give him time with his parents and like just kind of 
read the situation very, very, very well. And Travis commented and said, like, that's one of the things I like most about her is how self-aware she is. So this is what she he said. She's very self-aware. And I think that's why I really started to fall for her. How was how genuine she is around friends and family. It can get crazy for somebody with that much attention. And she just keeps it so chill and so cool. Um, he also commented about how the very first time she went to Arrowhead, he was telling her, like, we can get you security or we can, like, you know, do all these things. Things. And she was like, no, like, I just want to go with your friends and family. Like, it's fine. Um, and um, and that she just like walked through the front door, which is true. I don't know if people noticed it at the time, but there were pictures. I remember seeing pictures of that very first time Taylor went to Arrowhead. Pictures of her walking through the front door. She was wearing a mask, which was very smart. So people couldn't recognize her. And obviously like nobody knew she was going. So there wasn't like all this buzz and like no one knew until she was in the suite. So she was able to just walk through the front door easily because no one and she had a hat on and like she was pretty incognito um obviously once she went to the first game she couldn't do that anymore and she had to be more she had to have security she had to be a lot more like protected in in that sense but I think I think her willingness to just kind of like go with the flow and um show up with her friends and family and like not make it this whole big ordeal was obviously very attractive to Travis um He also talked about, or they were talking to him about how they do a really good job of like keeping their relationship private and not revealing too much. And Travis said that like, likes to keep things private, but at the same time, I'm not here to hide anything. That's my girl, that's my lady. And he's proud of that. So, and we've said this a thousand times, Travis does such a good job, they both do a great job of keeping what they want private, private, but also not keeping it secret. Travis being able to go on a podcast and talk about Taylor Swift is like really refreshing and cool because I think for, again, for so long, she's been with people who don't want to do that, who, who think it's taking something away from them to talk about her. And it's just, it's always been like this weird thing for her previous boyfriends to have to navigate. And Travis just doesn't care. He's just happy to talk about it. He's like, yeah, sure. He's not going to give you intimate details of their life and share things that like they wouldn't want shared, but he also doesn't have a problem giving you stuff and also talking about stuff. I've I've said this before, talking about stuff that, um, that like we, we all see publicly, you know, like he, he, we all saw Travis on stage with Taylor Swift. So I, I, I have no doubt that Travis will talk about being on stage with Taylor Swift because we all saw it. Like it's not a secret. Um, but he's, he's not going to go on a podcast and be like, so on this random Tuesday night when we were at home and this, that, the other happened. Cause that was a, that was a private moment. Like he's, 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 He's not going to re- reveal that. At least I don't think he would. Um, and then they also asked him to to rank his top three favorite Taylor Swift songs. And he's done this before, but he said his number one song, of course, is Blank Space. That will always be his favorite song. He loves that song. And he was commenting about how like he, because they're the same age, he obviously knew of Taylor like when he was in high school, when she was getting started, but that he didn't really become like a fan of hers until 1989. Um... And so, yeah, he he loves Blank Space. His second favorite song, Cruel Summer. Again, like, taste. That song's amazing. And then his third favorite song, he said, was So High School. Obviously, it's, I mean, it's about him. So if someone wrote a song about me, it it would be... one of my favorite songs too. So I can't judge him for that. And it's a great song. Um, but yeah, I just, I loved that podcast appearance. I thought it was very sweet, very cute. Um, he always just does such a good job navigating those questions and talking about her. He's just excellent at it. Um, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for new heights to come out. I, I really hope that they recorded after the Wembley shows. I kind of think they, they typically tend to record like the day before the episode drops, the episodes drop on Wednesdays. Um, and I cannot wait. And if tomorrow, if they're, if, if they are going to, going to talk about everything that happened with the London shows, then you better be back here because we'll be recapping everything that they talk about. I'm sure Jason will have his thoughts and comments about um, going to the Eras tour. We'll get Travis's comments on going on stage, all that good stuff. It's going to be a great episode. Can't wait for it. Um, But yeah, that is today's show. As I said, lots to discuss, lots to go over. Um, I'm sure we'll have so much more to discuss in the coming days. So again, 
subscribe to the channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.